Welcome back to our Awesome Case of the Month series. Feel free to comment below and I'll attempt to address any questions or concerns. This case was seen by the residents Dr. Silverberg and Devine along with the attending Dr. Mary Wormuth. The case starts with an 85-year-old male presenting by a medic from a rehabilitation care facility. The patient had been recently discharged to that facility and over the past 48 hours the patient was known to display increasing abdominal distension. A CT scan was performed at that time and it was remarkable for an ileus which resulted in nasogastric tube placement. A decision was made to transfer after the facility noted hypotension along with an episode of coffee ground emesis. Upon arrival to the emergency department, the patient was found to be extremely ill-appearing. He had a blood pressure in the mid-80s, even on 10 of norepinephrine, which had been started by his rehab hospital. His physical exam displayed diffuse abdominal pain and distension. The patient arrived critically ill to the emergency department. A CT scan performed less than 24 hours ago showed only an ileus. Given the concern for his stability to obtain another scan, an ultrasound was utilized at bedside to look for a potential etiology of his decompensation, along with the ability to help guide resuscitative decisions. Here is one of the first images obtained. A curvilinear probe was utilized to obtain this view in the lateral right mid quadrant. A large amount of free fluid was noted. This anechoic black fluid is seen surrounding multiple loops of bowel. The physicians were able to reference his recent CT and confirmed ascites was present at that time as well. During the examination with the curvilinear probe, Dr. Silverberg noted an odd appearance of bowel. He switched the higher resolution linear probe to help better characterize. Here are some of the first images obtained utilizing a linear probe. You will notice the increased clarity of the superficial structures compared to the curvilinear probe. Anatomy is depicted here. The classic appearance of subcutaneous tissue is most superficial, followed by the muscle and subsequent fascial layer, which is highlighted in orange. The bowel highlighted in blue can be seen surrounded by anechoic acidic fluid. Looking at bowel with ultrasound likely does not fall within the common practice of most people watching this video. Ultrasound of bowel is often limited in normal anatomy given the presence of intraluminal air. However, hopefully you will have enough experience to appreciate that this bowel looks quite abnormal. Specifically, the bowel wall appears to display evidence of dirty shadowing. I included this clip from the October 2019 case where I covered ultrasound diagnosis of small bowel obstruction to show the difference in the appearance of the bowel wall. To better emphasize this potential subtle finding, I point out the presence of air within the bowel wall here. We can clearly tell this dirt or shouting is associated with the bowel wall given the higher resolution offered by the linear probe. This was immediately recognized by the team. Given the acuity of the patient, there was a concern for pneumatosis and ischemic bowel. The appearance of air within normal tissue is often referred to as dirty shouting because the air in the tissue obscures visualization of structures deep to its presence. This air looks similar to our necrotizing fasciitis case discussed in the May 2021 case. Given the outside information, general surgery was immediately consulted as a CT scan order was placed. The CT scan confirmed the diagnosis of pneumatosis and radiology interpretation again raised the concern for ischemic bowel. Given this confirmation along with worsening hemodynamic status, which progressed to require multiple vasopressor infusions, a frank discussion ensued with family. The patient was converted to comfort measures and subsequently passed away from his disease process. This case represents a fairly novel application of ultrasound to diagnose pneumatosis. This case is unique because I cannot and do not advocate for utilizing ultrasound to evaluate for pneumatosis given the limitations associated with ultrasound for this use. However, I do strongly advocate for utilizing ultrasound in unstable patients where contributing information is often helpful to determine and clarify diagnostic and management decisions. This case is similar to the ruptured aortic aneurysm case from last month. While it did not provide a change in outcome, it allowed faster recognition of the etiology of the disease process, which initiated multiple downstream steps. As a bedside clinician, these little pieces of information are immensely helpful to assist in patient management and departmental flow. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the case. Feel free to comment below.